thank you very much for joining our sales bootcamp or our business development series and let's now continue our discussion on how you can create your personal brand and I think this is a very um, important topic because a lot of people just proceed to selling without necessarily thinking about their brand no and earlier we talked about the need to establish your target market and understand why your target market will uh, buy from you or will be interested to work with you no as you if you will be able to connect to their needs the results that they want to or the direction that they want to uh, proceed and at the same time, you'll be able to communicate also how can you help them by providing the biggest result to help them with their business. And uh, and at the same time, being able to communicate what you are providing along with all the other benefits that goes along with it, including financial benefits, emotional benefits, uh, physical benefits, and spiritual benefits. So the moment you're done with that, you are now ready to proceed in developing your personal brand no and um, you need it because uh, with so many players out there uh, trying to position themselves for one reason or another trying to position themselves being a specialist or expert or an authority on one product or service uh, you also need to distinguish yourself from everyone else you need to stand out in your own way no and be able to show uh, the value that you add and and your strengths uh, let it shine especially if you will be able to help your clients and more often than not when people talk about personal branding it is often associated by what people see on your facebook cover how your profile photo looks like or how your uh, social media graphics looks like or how your website looks like but but actually it is all about you no because each and every one of us were unique and we ourselves are our unique selling proposition you are the unique selling proposition and I think the more you can clearly communicate your brand in an in a bold way, in an authentic way, in a uniquely you way, then the more you'll be able to attract the people that you are meant to serve, no? The ones that you have clearly identified, the ones that you want to work with, that can also uh, bring out the best in you. However, um, a lot of people get into this exercise. Um, thinking that they can just craft a brand like it's something that you just create but in the process of creating it there are also a lot of things that you have to confront with yourself and there are also things that you have to let go no in order to be effective in crafting your personal brand no so let's let's also discuss that no the process that all the things that are involved in doing it and and I think one of the things that we have to remember is that you have to be able to face your own fears. Because sometimes I I have a, I remember in the past I have a situation where I will be meeting young people who will be signing out signing up for our blogging program or signing up for our e-commerce training program. But when it comes to going out there, putting their names out there, they don't some don't don't want to. Some don't even want to uh, private message their friends and let them know what they're doing uh, some don't want to create a Facebook page that would reflect their name among other things and uh, and and they, they are worried like what people will say of them no sabi ng yabang yabang nila baka ano bang key nila baka wala pa sila napapatunayan you know parang they are being judged they are judging they are the first uh, to judge themselves so I think it's important that we really need to confront no, uh, whatever uh, fears or biases that we may have against ourselves. Because otherwise, your personal branding will just be a, an idea, but it will never be executed or communicated because everything that that is hindering you back, all your worries are the ones that's going to stop you. no. So some of the things that you need to consider will be... Um, before we talk about branding and going out there, are you comfortable in going out there and share what you think? No, share your ideas, uh, sing and dance, no, and uh, you know, speak up. No, are are you confident? I are, are you are you doing it right now? Um, if you find yourself uh, holding yourself back and not necessarily 
uh, expressing what you think, your ideas, uh, show, showing your talent, what have you, then then you really have to evaluate: Are you ready in this in this phase and in this part of this in this in this in this process of creating your personal brand? And um, you might have a big vision as to what your brand is all about, like maybe you're targeting yourself to be a premium brand among others. But the question there is. Um, do you do you compromise yourself like for example you might position yourself as a premium brand but uh, but how can you position yourself as a premium brand if your pricing is a uh, is not premium no Baka you're you're not following also the pricing that is required to make such a program work no so so are you are you also moving along towards it? No, are you positioning yourself towards that space? No, so that is something that you also need to consider or review. And I think uh, sometimes the reason why we don't do it is that there are also things that may be holding us back. No, um, maybe we have a lot of worries or fears that may be holding us back. So you know, we also need to confront that. For example, um, I, I consider myself uh, fully expressed in a sense that I, I feel happy whenever I get to share ideas like, you know, like this one, doing these uh, video series that you can find on my YouTube channel. I'm very happy whenever I get to do them. So I feel I'm fully expressed whenever I do that. And then um, I would also like... I also like the idea that I can express myself without fear of being judged, like like not being subjected to other people's opinions, especially in my writings. Um, I also feel that uh, I'm that I am able to express myself and be in my fullest potential whenever I get to help other people no, uh, develop their business ideas or uh, work on some stuff that they can apply to their business or maybe help them um, give them ideas that can help them close a sale or establish their brand no, and being able to execute it or whenever I get considered on projects because I, I got referred and I realized that there are no other folks being considered and I, and I was the primary choice for the project. So whenever that happens, you know, I, I really feel that uh, I am at my best, you know, that I am not faking anything, that I'm really doing what I'm doing. <laughs> But of course, no. Sometimes uh, I also get tense, like in my earlier videos, uh, because I haven't done YouTube live. I, I'm I'm adjusting with the YouTube live process, so I think at the start of my videos, in the first two ones, I was a little bit rattled, no. Uh, but you know, uh, it doesn't mean that just because I'm rattled, I I should stop, no. I should go beyond that and really focus on the value that I am offering. But like I mentioned, there are also instances that maybe. We've, we've also sold out a little like maybe we did not um, we, we did not live up to what we want to be you know for example uh, I have experience in the past that maybe even if I want to be paid this, this much but because I needed money I'm willing to compromise on the amount that I'm willing to charge or doing compromising the quality of my work by doing last minute submissions or maybe working on projects without proper contracts. In fact, I still do that now. <laughs> and and I think in those cases, I, I felt I sold out, no? Like I settled for less, no? Sometimes I think that happens. And I think we need to be reminded that if we really want to live out our, what we want to be, you know, how we want to be known to the world, uh, what what does our brand stand for, you really have to decide as early as now, what are the things that you won't settle for less, no? And then, um, of course, uh, to be able to prevent that from happening again, I also have to be picky, no? And, and, and that can include being selective on projects. Like, for example, I want to work on projects that are meant to empower, that meant to challenge my skills, my knowledge, that can make me grow, that will allow me to meet uh, new people and uh, share and be able to have the channel to continuously share my knowledge or basically fostering a prosperity um, mindset no in that regard okay so so let's continue with our discussion i think um 
So, so I think it's really important that if we really want to be able to articulate ourselves, no, uh, we really have to think about um, how can we get the message out there? Like, how can we overcome our fears or anything that may be preventing us from living out our true colors? What are we willing to do? So usually, um, I think the moment you decide that you want to put yourself out there in market and attract clients, you're taking a bold step. So by taking a bold step, then you have to make some baby steps or initiatives. Like, for example, for me, before, having a YouTube channel is a difficult task for me. No? But now that I've done it, I can say that if I'm going to start, start a series, that would be an easy task for me. But since TikTok is new for me and I'm still trying to find my way around it, then that would be a medium or a hard task for me. No? So you can think about situations where you can be comfortable in expressing yourself. That can include the channels that you're going to use and the content ideas that you will be communicating to others. Like, for example, for me, um, maybe something that I want to do in the future is to offer my uh, coaching services to an international market, um, meaning I don't have to limit my clients in the Philippines. So that that is uh, is that hard? Maybe... Um, Am I afraid to do that? Not necessarily so. And I think I could be bold in doing that. Actually, I've, in a sense, I've already achieved that since I have um, a client base in China right now. But I think I want to do more of it. The point that I could say that I've overcome or I have achieved a certain level of comfort in doing that. Maybe if I already have like um, maybe um, three or four more in that in that in that area. No, for example. Or so 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 that is one no, um, maybe a little uh, on a level up, maybe on a level two difficulty maybe, uh, like for example I published books in the past no I published uh, three books one magazine and a dozen or uh, a dozen research reports under the digital Filipino brand, so let's say maybe I wanna do another book but instead of targeted to the Philippines, maybe I want to do a book that's targeted internationally and be able to do a book tour. No? Is, that, is that going to be hard for me? Actually, I don't think so since I have the experience. But I need to put my mind into it. I need to put my resources into it. I need to devote myself into it. So maybe that's a little bit me. That, that can be on a medium level or maybe that would be hard. <laughs> all together um, uh, maybe like my events no I, I have an e-commerce summit and a digital influencers marketing summit that I used to do here in the Philippines uh, maybe I could start thinking about doing them in another country or do it internationally so that can be or, or my own branded event um, headlined by myself and getting other people to help me out and that can be a medium or a hard type of task no and i need to be bolder in being able to carry that out if i really want to live up the, the brand that i'm trying to position uh, myself into okay so that is an example when we talk about uh, being bold all right so so, of course, uh, if we really want to achieve our maximum potential and be able to live out the brand that we're dreaming of for ourselves, no, um, it's important that we are able to articulate our brand well. No? So, to articulate our brand well, there are three things that, uh, there are several things that we need to consider. Um, however, before we can move towards that, it is also important that we have clear intentions on where we want to go so that we don't end up creating a brand and then later on abandon the brand that we have identified for ourselves. No? So where do you really want to go? And um, I think uh, um, I think that is important. No? So for example, if people will ask me, uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? What's my intention? So 
usually I will tell people that well I want to develop more coaches I want to I want to develop a hundred coaches or maybe I want to help a hundred entrepreneurs improve in their business so I have been doing that for a while it's a small number yes I can target a big number but rather than doing it myself I could help people who can do it for others for example and then um, so so that is one you know so let's say so let's say like many people who would like to build a brand especially in this in this realm maybe some people would say I want to be a successful coach I want to be a successful speaker meaning I get I'm getting bookings left and right I want to have a solid paying community so so let's say so let's say that's my intention so but of course those intentions no matter how nice they sound at the back of my head I also have a lot of conflicts no and my conflicts can include oh, I'm not so sure how can I be a successful coach since there are a lot of uh, coaches out there trying to market themselves so there's a lot of competition and then I don't know about being a trainer although I still get speaking gigs but uh, there's also that idea that your clients can outgrow you and also there are people who want to see new faces hear new insights so maybe uh, even if I still have fresh insights, fresh ideas, but usually entities want to see new faces, new ideas, new insights. No? And then um, there's also that idea of are you going to charge high or are you going to charge low? No? And, and behind those conflicts, uh, there are also fears behind it why I think that way. And that can include maybe I'm a late player in the game. Um, uh, because there are already so many coaches out there so I would consider myself a lay player in the game there's too much competition you know there are a lot of uh, it's an international uh, you have a lot of international competition you have local competition and and your challenge is how you're going to stand out and then you're also afraid that even if you build the community how will you handle a situation where uh, your you will lose community your community members to others or you might end up finding yourself with your own with your own share of competition even within your community no so I think um, a lot of us have although we have a lot of clear intentions with what we want to do but uh, in reality we are we also have our own shares of uh, fears and doubts whether we will be capable in achieving it or not and more often than not this is not uh, communicated and and as a result uh, people abandon their branding initiatives their business initiatives their marketing initiatives for one reason or another but actually their doubts their fears have over empowered their dreams no? so that can also happen okay and I think that's the reason why we want to be able to really tap into our strengths and when when tapping into our strengths we really want to celebrate um what we are capable of no celebrate what you're good at and recognize that give proper credit to it i think that's really important no and let that be part of the of part of what you are who you are, what you do, and how you proje project your brand, no? how you project yourself uh, to the world. No? So this can be uh, the things that, um, that this can include uh, things that you're good at, like maybe your talents. No? So like, like for me, I could say that um, I think much of what I do now, uh, I can trace it back to childhood. Like I like participating in recitations. I like to teach ever since I was young. I'm really, uh, I'm comfortable actually in selling. And I think one of my, uh, I don't know if I would call it a talent, but I love imagining things. My imagination uh, is really huge. No, um, Like I have a lot of, uh, like I would, Sometimes I would overthink a scenario and imagine it. So sometimes I can worry myself or I can excite myself because of how far my imagination will go. That is why I really like visualization exercise, like visualizing into the future. And I realize the farther that you think, the sometimes it's hard to 
think that far ahead but uh, I think if you let your imagination uh, guide you it can also show you a lot of possibilities um, of course with um, of course in, in my case I, I also do it with prayers also because I don't want my imagination to go to places that I don't want to go <laughs> and then um, and I'm sure that uh, if you're if you're a little bit lost in terms of what what to put into your brand another thing that you can also consider uh will be the what people say about you like i'm sure you have your own share of praises people saying that they like you people saying that maybe they learn a lot from you they understand it better or they know how to do it now or maybe they will say i want to be like you you know i had my own share of uh, compliments and when people compliment you when people praise you you ask them what what did i do that you really like that you really appreciate and whatever they tell you and the result of it uh you can also use that as a brand as a as a guide actually if you're a little bit lost in your branding you can actually write to friends and ask them to um tell you your best characteristics or uh, maybe um, like how you help them or or maybe something memorable that happened that that made you stand out you know that really made a mark on that person um, and uh, and and other things that they would like to note of no that maybe it's it is important for you as part of your branding personal branding development no um, I think what makes you memorable is really important because sometimes we have this idea of what makes us memorable but actually when you talk to people they there are other things that makes you memorable like for example for me i i always assume that people remember me because of e-commerce and yet when i talk to different people uh i realize that uh, even in the industry people people think of me differently like maybe uh they are they are thinking of me more from the perspective of uh, um, let's say uh, social media some people will think of me more in the area of e-commerce and then uh, some people will also think of me more in the area of uh, one project that I've done either with a government agency or with an association so it's really different and then I think as a in developing your personal brand, you also need to be open in talking about yourself, no? That, because there's a story behind the brand. There's always a story behind the brand. So like like in my case, uh, when people talk about strengths, like where where did that strength come from? What's the background story behind that strength? What inf what happened to you in the past that influenced who you are today? So maybe things that happened in your family that made you stronger, or maybe things that happened in your life that made you stronger. So for me, uh, that can be I have my own family side of the story, like what happened to me in my childhood. Uh, that really uh, influenced me with who I am today. Like, um, for example, um, like what I usually share is that uh, in my childhood, on the father's side of my family, um, my father, uh, my parents were not were not uh, well off, no, uh, in comparison to their siblings. So usually, whenever we need to enroll. Uh, for school, uh, they will always uh, borrow money from relatives or getting loans here and there. So I grew up with the mindset that debt is just natural. You know, borrowing money is just natural. Until uh, later on in life when I realized that it's not, no? And it really got me into a lot of trouble. And it took me a long, long, long time, no? To, um, to fix and get over those issues, no? And then... Um, of course, because my parents were not well off, uh, we I, I was able to witness, you know, like how 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 we are treated differently among others, and uh, and in the process, I think on the positive side of it, it made us really determined in terms of um, trying to achieve something for ourselves, um, and and make things a little bit. And improve you know do our own share in improving our own lives no and um, and fuel that sense of competition that fuel that need for achievement I usually uh, explain that further uh, during my talks and then in my in 
in on on the prof on the professional side uh people usually ask me uh how i got started because my uh, i usually tell them talk about the digital filipino journey because digital filipino is an is an advocacy so i could say that since the internet started and until now i'm living a life uh, filled with advocacy advocacy in terms of helping msmes helping professionals helping entrepreneurs helping our viewers like the folks watching this video um, and I never get tired talking about it uh, but of course for the sake of this discussion I won't I won't dwell on that too much because uh, I, I'm really focused more on sharing uh, my, the concepts with you so but I think it's really important that in the development of your brand you celebrate your strengths you celebrate your talent uh, appreciate all the compliments that people have given you and remember them and what made and when they tell you what made you special what made you memorable remember them um, all the challenges that you face in your personal life and in your work life that you are not afraid to talk about um, you know tap into that because I think uh, that's really important as well because this forms who you are and also serves as an input to your personal brand all right so so as we proceed in um, communicating our brand um, there there are some there are some important components that you have to remember so the first component is uh, um, who you are you know who do you want to serve no I think it is important that we are clear on who we want to serve we discussed that in the previous video so i'd like to remind that again so let's not get distracted on the target market or we have to be clear as to who are we helping and then the second part is uh why are we helping them i mean what what are you helping them with so so like in my case when people ask me who i help and what i help them with so i said i actually help a lot of people but if i'm gonna zoom in to the most important client like let's say the business owner you know, where a big part of my advocacy is helping uh, msmes or small business owners it's all about improving their revenue online helping them you know guiding them on how they can improve in that space and if they are if they have a few family members helping out or a few staff helping them out and they want them to be trained so that 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 can also include or for them to be coached then that can include uh developing and coaching uh emerging leaders in the business so who you help and what you help them with i think that that needs to be very clear you know rather than saying i have so many uh, where do you want me to start that's not going to help you in so far as your brand building exercise is concerned that has to be um narrowed down it has to be very focused it has to be laser focused no and 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 really clear no rather than being too random no um i think another thing that you also need to be clear about as far as your personal brand is concerned especially when you're having conversations with your client you don't want to end up searching for answers at the time this question gets asked to you no? and that is uh why do you do why do you do what you do you know it's it, i think that's a that's a popular phrase now no? what is your why you know like why do you do what you do um i think that is that is also uh, that is something where you need to have a good answer no good answer in the sense that it has to be real it has to be reflective of uh, your passion uh, that, will all, that will also explain why are you so passionate with what you're doing so in my case i if i if i get asked that question i will usually tell them that i just love to see how business owners grow their online revenue whenever i meet an entrepreneur who's at loss in how to do their business online and if i see them uh, grow uh, gradually grow and generate online business and if they are able to start forming teams so that the entrepreneur does not have to do it themselves all the time i think that that really fuels me you know? that really um inspires me um um, and 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 whenever I get that, whenever I achieve that type of an experience, it fuels my energy to continuously do what I do. No, so uh, that's why uh, 
um, I think I'm gonna do this until old age. <laughs> uh, for as long as there are people who are willing to learn and uh, learn from the experience, learn from the insights, and would like to apply those insights, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. And the, I think my vision and what I hope to achieve is to really uh, empower individuals who would like to help others. And uh, also business owners who would like to help themselves. No? As for a number, well, I usually peg it at 100. Uh, but I, you know, I think I should start really writing a logbook as to how many have I helped through the years. But, but the problem there is you, don't, you cannot really take credit for it because that's only, you're only a small portion of what they have achieved. No? Like you're only 2%, 3%. And 97, 98% or 99% is all them. Their efforts, their resources... So I think you can only take, I think you can only take credit so much. So maybe that's why it's hard for me to peg a number. But I think for as long as I know that I'm making a dent, that's okay for me. All right. So so on the last part, I think it's also important that you really need to think about your uh, tagline. No, like what do you want um, to be known for? Like uh, this, this more or less explains who you serve and uh, why why you help the people that you want to help, no? And if you can capture it in a sentence, I think that's better. So um, there are many ways that you can go about it. You can some some branding some branding phrases focuses on the person, while some branding phrases focuses on 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 the other person to their client like for example i could say that i help um i help entrepreneurs uh let's say i help i help business owners um develop their online business with my independent insight so or or or, or depending on how you're gonna construct it so there are many ways uh that you can go about it actually i've Usually, I tailor I tailor my brand depending on the service that I am providing because it's hard sometimes to come up with a single brand. Uh, some, sometimes I would I would uh, the phrases that I've used include helping leaders achieve continuous business growth or develop leaders who can empower others, especially if I'm working with aspiring coaches um, or service or freelancers or service providers who are trying to develop a brand so that they can demonstrate that they can help entrepreneurs. Uh, or I can say, help you grow as a leader, market yourself, market your business and attract clients. Or I could say, enabling leaders to achieve strategic business growth. So there's a lot of fluff there. Or equipping leaders achieve digital business growth. Or I'm a leader's guide to e-commerce branding and leadership. At my highest value, I provide independent insights. So that can be another way of doing it. So there are many ways that you can customize your tagline. And I think the biggest influence to your tagline will also be the feedback of your clients and the people that you have helped and have benefited from what you do. So I wish you luck in this process. And uh, thank you so much for watching this series. And I hope to see you again on the next video. Thank you, thank you.